Hi, welcome to VTeach. Now I am going to discuss the topic signal approximation using orthogonal functions. Now here already we explained in the orthogonal signal space. Any function or any signal is possible to represent as a sum of its components along n number of mutual orthogonal functions when they form a complete set. So now here based on that uh, let us see how the signal is approximated with n number of mutual orthogonal functions. So for that let us consider n number of mutual orthogonal functions over the interval t1 to t2 as g1 of t, g2 of t and so on gn of t. According to the orthogonality condition, once they are orthogonal, they have to satisfy the condition integral t1 to t2, the dot product or the product of two different signals must be 0. So, according to that, here once we are saying g1 to gn of t are orthogonal over the interval t1 to t2, we can say integral t1 to t2, gm of t, gn of t dt value as 0 if m is not equal to n and if m equal to n it will be some constant let us say km. So for the different uh, signals the integration value must be 0. If you take the product of the same signals then it must be some constant and already we said whenever this constant km is equal to 1 we can call those orthogonal functions as orthogonal normal functions or orthonorm functions. If km is 1, we can call R the norm functions. And if km is some another constant, it is not unity, it may be some another constant. At that time, those orthogonal functions are also called as basis functions. So, see here the difference, basis function, basic function. Basic function means elementary signals. Basic functions means elementary functions. Those are impulse, step signal, ramp signal, exponential signal, sinusoidal signal. So, these are elementary signals or you can say basic signals. Now, here we are saying basis signals. Basis signals means nothing but orthogonal signals only and there the integration of the same signal product square is must be some constant other than unity then you can call those orthogonal functions as basis functions. Okay. So, now here let us see the approximation of any other function let us say f of t with its components along these n number of orthogonal functions and so consider the component along g1 as c1, the component along g2 as c2 and so on the component along gn as a cn then we can write f of t as c1 g1 of t plus c2 g2 of t plus and so on cn gn of t over the interval t1 to t2 or in short form we can write f of t as sigma r equal to 1 to n c r g r of t over the interval t1 to t2. So, here the criteria is uh, the selection of the coefficient c r. And to select those coefficients, we have the criteria, the mean square error must be minimum. So, we have to select C1, C2 and so on, Cn, all those constants such that the mean square error in this approximation as a minimum. So, for that, first we need to define error function. Error function means the difference between original function and its approximated function. So, here by the definition error function is f of t minus approximation that is sigma r equal to 1 to n c r into g r of t. Now mean square error that is a average of square of the error function or you can say mean of square of the error function over the interval t1 to t2 that is 1 by t2 minus t1 integral t1 to t2 f e square f e means f of t minus sigma r equal to 1 to n c r g r of t whole square dt. Now, here we have to select these components such that the mean square error is minimum. That means uh, we have to differentiate uh, 
epsilon with respect to c1 and then equate it to 0 to get c1. Similarly, we have to in differentiate with respect to c2 then equate it to 0 to get c2. So, like that to get the coefficient cn to get the coefficient cn such that mean square error minimum we need to take the differentiation with respect to that coefficient and then have to equate it to 0. See in the previous signal approximation we taken the definite differentiation why because there epsilon is the function of the single component c12 but here we are saying or we are going to find out the number of coefficient and so here epsilon is the function of c1 c2 and so on cn that's why we have to take the partial differentiation so when you want to differentiate with respect to c1 we have to consider the remaining coefficients as constants and when you want to differentiate with respect to c2 we have to consider the remaining other coefficients as a constant so let us generalize let us consider the coefficient cj is the required coefficient so we have to differentiate mean square error with respect to that general coefficient cj and then we have to equate it to 0 to find cj right so here epsilon by the definition we have the formula that is 1 by t2 minus t1 integral t1 to t2 f of t minus sigma r equal to 1 to n cr gr of t whole square dt is equal to 0. So, here we have the differentiation and uh, integration and uh, within this when you expand this we have the f square of t and uh, cr square gr square of t and another one minus 2 into f of t into cr gr of t right so when you write this one as a minus b whole square then we have the a square plus b square minus 2 a b terms right and here when you say f square of t which is independent of the coefficient cz that differentiation is zero and uh, when you take whatever the coefficient cr square other than cj because that is also constant with respect to cj that differentiation is also 0. So, whenever this r is not equal to 2 j, then that differentiation is also considered as a constant differentiation and it is also 0. And in the last third one also, when you have cr f of t gr of t, in this case also, whenever cr is not equal to 2 c j, at that time, the differentiation of this entire term that is constant is 0, right. So, here from this equation 6, and from these three conditions, we can say there exists only two non-zero terms, isn't it? Why? Because see, in this we have f square of t, which is independent of cj, so its differentiation 0. And the second one, sigma r equal to 1 to n, cr square, gr square of t, right? So, within this r value 1 to n, and out of 1 to n, we have one more cj. So, except cj remaining all are considered as constant. So, all the terms are zeros except cj. So, cj square gj square of t and in the third one we have 2 sigma r equal to 1 to n cr f of t gr of t and within this also r equal to 1 to n means there are n coefficients out of n we have to differentiate with respect to cj term. That is why remaining all except the cj are constant, so the differentiation is 0. So, we have only 2 cj f of t gr of t, right. So, out of all the terms, all are 0 except 2 terms and those 2 terms are cj square gj square of t and another one minus 2 cj f of t into gj of t, right. So, here we have only 2 non-zero terms. Those are 2 cj f of t gj and another one cj square into gj square of t. So, now here we have the differentiation and integration just interchange the order of uh, integration and differentiation. Then we have integral t1 to t2 differentiation with respect to cj of the term minus 2 cj f of t gj of t and then dt plus integral t1 to t2 differentiation with respect to cj of cj square g j square of t dt and it is equal to 0 and in this case this minus 2 f of t g j of t are independent of c j. So, we can write outside 
and the differentiation of cj with respect to cj value is 1 so here we have minus 2 f of p gj of p into 1 and in this case cj square and this gj square of p is independent of cj so it is constant so gj square of p into differentiation of cj square with respect to cj which is 2 into cj so it is 2 into cj gj square of p dt which is equal to 0 now from this we have 2 cj integral t1 to t2 gj square of t dt is equal to 2 into integral t1 to t2 f of t gj of t dt so on both sides 2 is cancelled out and from this we have the expression for cj which is integral t1 to t2 f of t gj of t dt by integral t1 to t2 gj square of t dt so this is the expression for any constant c1 c2 and so on cn which are selected such that the mean square error is minimum so finally in this approximation we have f of t which is a sigma r equal to 1 to n cr gr of t over the interval t1 to t2 and these coefficients must be selected such that mean square error mse or epsilon is minimum and that expression of c r is integral t1 to t2 f of t gr of t dt by integral t1 to t2 gr square of t dt and from the orthogonality condition we know gr square of t dt integration value some constant so let us say that constant as a kr so we have the cr which is 1 by kr into integral t1 to t2 f of t gr of t dt so this is about the signal approximation using n number of mutual orthogonal functions. Thank you.